Free yourself. Free at last. Free at last. From what has been holding you back. With empowering shows and the music that you like. Lose FM. Inspiring content. Inspiring content indeed. You are coming live from Unity FF 103 Shell House, 22 Ferrara Street. System Bombella, Kamalam, Mr. MK, the Pet Gang, Amini Studio, Six Spot Zone, John of a Scat, Sison Jalo City, Emma Minister Sell, who's calling Simbis Lano, Amo 20, John of a School of Magazi, Mr. Student Hamming, and John Amana, the great man of God. Um, Fundis. Hey, my brother MK, how are you, sir? No, God. God is good. God is good. God is good. I hope your week was excellent. I'm I'm very very happy. Don't be angry, sir. I'm very happy. We are going to be fine. God is good. I imagine singing at Bona. We're going to be fine. Enjoy it. Excellent, man of God. Excellent. But your listeners, they were inspired last yes. week Sunday when I was. I went on the page and I saw the comment. People are encouraged. People are motivated. People are mm. excited. They are following you. Episode one. What are you having for us this afternoon, man of God? All right. Today um, we are on episode twenty-seven. Eh? So I want us to drill deeper. And this issue of salvation is is made complicated. You know, God has made us simple and easy. But we have made ourselves complicated. So I want mm. us to go deeper and look at this issue of salvation. Because when you are saying, I am a child of God, I am born of God, I am a citizen of heaven, you, it is, you are a different species. But the problem is that, let's just say maybe you had a very big scar here mm. on your face. The scar will remain there. But that does not mean you are not born again. Maybe you've got okay. five children. You are a woman. They all have different fathers. The fact that now you have received Jesus, you are born again. As much as you cannot swallow back your children and be involved in war, but you are still born again. <coughs> this is a spiritual thing. The change that has taken place, it is in your spirit. And you need to embrace that and you need to understand. That is why in the beginning of my sessions, when I was teaching here, I taught about the subconscious mind, that the way that um, life works, it is through the subconscious mind. The information that we take and we embrace. The Bible, you know, according to the book of um, um, Proverbs. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, man. <laughs> Sorry right. about that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's okay. According to the book of Proverbs, chapter 423, that's the verse I've been quoting since the beginning. Amen. It says, all the, it's why it says, guard your heart above everything else. We've got security systems in our houses. We are guarding mm. our cars in many ways. We even have what we call life insurance, whereby you are guarding your life should anything unexpected take place. But now the Bible yes. says, above everything that you guard, guard your heart. If there is any mm. investment that any human being has to do, it must be directed towards the heart because that's where the springs of life are coming from. Everything that you see in your life, it is a manifestation of embraced information. Either you are aware or you are not aware of the information. So the subconscious mind is important. Now, when it comes to the issue of being born again, what you received is a weight of God. It must be embraced in your subconscious mind. That is how you are going to benefit on the salvation that you have received. When we embraced that reality, that is what we call faith. And embracing the reality. Unless you let that reality sink into your heart, which is your subconscious mind, you cannot benefit from it. Because according mm. to the way God designed the systems of this universe, it is so that the things that are manifesting in our lives, they are coming from the heart. The heart is a ground. You plant that truth in your heart. You plant that truth in your subconscious mind. Definitely you will repeat. So that's the problem that we have. Most of us, we have an identity crisis. We don't know really what it means to be born again. And because of that, we don't really know who we are. And because of that, even when we go around, you know, you go around with your head down, you know, dragging your feet because you have a problem of knowing who you are. 
you define yourself according to the the things that are happening around you and yet god who is the spirit who created you in his image and in his likeness he is telling you who you are but you don't mm. listen to what he is saying you listen to what your circumstances are saying you listen to what people are saying and because mm. of that you become a victim of those realities that you believe instead of being a product of the truth which comes from the word mm. of god that truth must be embraced it must be believed that is the only way we benefit from it mm. so now today i just want to clarify something about the issue of being born again because if you are not sure about your salvation and you are confused you will have a problem in participating in what is rightfully yours as a child of god so because of that i just want to explain and break it down how salvation come about what is this thing that we are talking about and i believe that after today's session there will be more light in most of us and we will be able to start um you know to start participating on what is rightfully ours amen all right let's go to the book of romans chapter five we are going to read a couple of you read a couple of verses today i'm not going to be jumping up and down a lot i just want to stick only on romans chapter five when we read the book of Romans, it's very it's a very nice book because mm. Paul is writing to the church in Rome. But what was happening there, there were Jews and there were people which are called Gentiles, you know, Greeks and people who were not Jews because the Bible is written for three groups of people. Number one, we've got Jews, which was the nation that God chose. That are the people that received the law, what we call the law of Moses. Number two, mm. with Gentiles, it's everyone else who is not a Jew. All right. Mm. And number three, with children of God, either you are a Jew or you are a Gentile, as long as you are in Christ, <laughs> then you, you understand. So we need to understand. So in the book of Romans, Paul was addressing the Jews who were thinking that um, the Gentiles that now have received Jesus, they need to keep the law in order to receive the salvation. They thought that maybe they would be before God because of their performance and keeping the law. So Paul is addressing that to say, guys, you Jews, you knew God, you were chosen. But those who are not believers, they had the conscience which God was is going to use to judge them. So either you are a Jew or you are a Gentile, you all need Christ. You are all sinners. We all short, um, we we fell short of the glory of God. So we all need the grace of God. Now. In the book of Romans chapter 5, he is going deeper to explain. I'm going to start reading from verse 12. It says, death through Adam, life through Christ. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man. These are the things that I want us to mark. Sin entered the world through how many people? One man. Let's keep that one in mind. It then says, and death through sin. So, because of sin, that entered through one man. Mm. Death also entered through sin. Sin which entered mm. through one man. Now it says, and in this way, death came to all men because all sinned. Now the question is who committed sin? It's one man. But mm. then sin came to everyone because of that transgression of one person. The Bible says all of them have sinned. You know, when I make an example of this, my brother, if you mm. go to Swaziland and you give birth to children in Swaziland, they yeah. are going to have a citizen of Swaziland because they are born there. So now mm. they are a product of the decision that you have made. They are inheriting mm. that decision, you understand, that you have made, the results of that. You know, I love Nigerians. Um, when we watch their movies, we can see that these guys are very clever. What they used to do every time when the woman is getting pregnant, they used to take them to USA <laughs> because yeah. once you give birth in USA, <laughs> that should become a citizen of America. Now they get all the benefits, they get the green card. You understand? These guys were very yeah. wise. Example: their children were getting dual citizenship. You understand? Mm. So, but it's a decision which is made by the parent. So, in this case, Adam decided to sin. So, because he is in a world of sin, everyone who is born is not a Swazi, it's not a Shangan, it's a sinner. Mm -hmm. because of the world mm -hmm. where they are born into so mm -hmm. everyone is a sin and in that world there is something that lives in that entity that world is called death 
So mm. everyone who is in sin, who is born of Adam, is a sinner and they all deserve to die because the Bible says the wages of sin, one sin, is what is death. Now we continue, verse 13. For before the law was given, sin was in the world, but sin is not taken into account where there is no law. I'm not going to go deeper here because I don't think there is any true listening to me here. And because of that, yeah. the law of Moses was never written for anyone who's listening to me, as long as you are not a, a Jew. Because the mm. law was given to the Jews specifically. All right? Mm. And because mm. of that, let us jump that because it was not ours. If you are in church and they are telling you to keep the law of Moses, they are dragging you to a to something that is not yours. They failed, and yet they want mm. to drag something which was too hard, even for themselves. That is why Jesus came, the Jews themselves, they all needed Jesus also to be saved from their own law. Because when you look at the law, the law is a mirror that shows you how bad you are, and it does not help you. It tells you that you are so bad, you need Jesus. When you come to Jesus, the Bible says Jesus is our mirror. Then when you look at Jesus, he says, you are as perfect as me. Look at me. You are just right. like me. So he is helping right. you. The way you treat yourself, you treat yourself as if you are Jesus because he is your mirror. You are just like him. So let's continue because of time quickly. Then now it says in verse 14, nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who was a pattern of the one to come so there was somebody who was going to come i want us to understand here that adam did not actually turn out to be the perfect image of god that the bible is talking about in genesis 126 that is why when you read the bible throughout it does not refer to adam as the image and likeness of god mm -hmm. but when you look at christ the bible says he is the image of the invisible god the visible image of the invisible god he is the express of his person. You understand? He is the reflection Amen. of his splendor, of his glory. When you look at Jesus, he is the only and the true perfect image and likeness of God. God yeah. even says, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. You understand? He's that perfect image. So Adam, in other words, is just a shadow of the second. In fact, the, the Bible calls Jesus the last Adam. The fact that you've got people who are coming from the loins of Adam, it means we are going to have people who are coming from the last Adam, which is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, let us understand. We are continuing. Oh, my God. But the gift is not like the trespass. All right? For if the many die by the trespass of one man, how much more did God's grace, God's grace, God's grace, and the gift that came by the grace of the one man jesus christ overflow to the many now adam sinned and everyone is a sinner because of adam jesus never mm. sinned if you receive jesus you are not a sinner Amen. this thing that's why the bible says now the, the verse that we read in the book of second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 when it, where it says if any man is in christ now this is a new environment you are in christ when you are in Christ, you are not a sinner, you are a child of God. The Bible says in Christ everything is new. The yeah. old is gone and behold, everything has become new. So now we've got mm. Jesus who is the last Adam. So we've got Adam. Children of Adam are sinners. Children of Jesus Christ or children of God are what? Oh, children of Jesus Christ are children of God, the righteousness of God. Let me quickly finish this up. Verse 16. Again. The gift of God is like the, it's not like the results of one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation. But the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. So everyone who is in Adam, because of his mm. sin, brought condemnation. It doesn't matter, my brother, who's a good in Ghana. But I MK, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you are such a good sinner. You understand? Yeah. But it does mm -hmm. not exempt you from being a sinner because you are still in Adam. And the sin mm -hmm. that you have inherited is that of Adam. It's not your sins that you commit every mm -hmm. day. No, it's one sin which was committed by Adam. It puts you somewhere mm -hmm. where you become a sinner. But when you receive mm -hmm. the free gift 
of grace. Oh my God. You already received the abundance of grace, the grace of God, and the free gift. You just received Jesus. And the Bible says, you are the righteousness of God. You are clean. Now, <coughs> let me finish this quick. I see my time is up. Let me quickly run to verse 19. It says, for just as through the obedience of the one man, the many were made sinners. Mm. You understand? They were what? They were made sinners. They were made. So everyone was made as you don't make yourself a sinner. And if you are not making yourself a sinner, it means everything yeah. that you do. Even if they are saying, my brother, you raped somebody. You are mm. not a sinner because you raped somebody. You are a sinner because you are a child of Adam. Even mm. if people, you are not a sinner because you have killed. I understand that killing is a sin. But it is a child and a product of your nature, which you inherited from Adam. Mm. Therefore, now, the very same verse, it says, um, also, through the obedience of one man, many will be made righteous. So when you are a child of God and you have received Jesus, you are made righteous. It's not your good mm. head making you a righteous person or a child of God. No, 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 no. I will change that makes you righteous. No, 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 no. It, because you are in class, the environment and the place where you are in, it defines you. Now, the question is what happens my brother if you are a rapist and you meet somebody you give them money and you show them life does that mean now you are a child of god you are righteous you are a good person no you are a sinner that did a good thing but what mm. happens if you are a child of god who is righteous who then commits sin you are a child of mm. god that sin you are not a sinner because being a sinner is your nature mm. what makes you a sinner is being a child of of Adam, and you are you are a child of Adam if you have not received Jesus, because it is in receiving and embracing Jesus. This is the grace of God that He has given to humanity. That just accept my son, believe in Him. When you believe in Him, you are my child. It's not about your actions. It's not about your failures. It's not about your sh your shortcomings. You are my mm. child. Your identity is not based on your performance, but it is based on your new nature that you have received when you received Jesus. Because of time, let's stop here, my brother. Tomorrow, we will dive a little bit deeper and even make it more simpler. Thank you. Wow. Wow, man. Wow, man. I'm encouraged. I'm inspired knowing that I'm a child of God. Amen. Ah, man. That's, pow that's powerful, man of God. May God bless you. We are praying for more revelation as you continue with the work, as you continue to minister tomorrow to the body of Christ. We are praying, we are saying more and more revelation so that when we interact as we are interacting, our lives will never be the same. Bless you, man of God. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Bless you too. Amen. 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 That was the man of God. Wow. Wow. What a weight that we are having for Saturday.